Today we're going to look at what it means for a real valued function f to have a limit at a particular point a. Uh, you might already have some intuitive idea, perhaps from studying calculus in your first year, where you were told that the limit as x approaches a of some function f of x is equal to l if f of x gets close to l uh, for x close to a. Well, that's the rough idea, but we need a precise definition of phrases like gets close to. The definition we're using in the lectures is the following. So let's start by reading this definition. Let f be a function from capital A to the real numbers, whose domain contains a deleted neighbourhood of the point A. Remember that a deleted neighbourhood of A is simply a, an open interval around A, but with A itself removed or deleted. The limit of the function f at A is L if, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if the modulus of x minus A is between zero and delta, then the modulus of f of x minus L is less than epsilon. Uh, this definition can be a lot to take in when you first encounter it, so let's look through the definition one more time. We're saying that the limit of the function f at a is l if, given any positive number epsilon, however small epsilon is chosen, we can find a positive number delta such that for all x which lie within delta of a, but which are not equal to a, we have that the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. It might help to think about what that means graphically. So here's a graph of some particular function f. Um, note that here, at the special point a, I've actually drawn a hollow circle. All I mean by this is that in this example, I'm imagining that f is not actually even defined at a. Um, an important point about limits is that if I want to know what the limit of f is as x approaches a, that doesn't actually depend on what f does at a itself only on the behaviour of f for x close to a. OK, but note that as x gets close to a, maybe over here or over here, f of x gets close to this value l. So what would it mean to say that the limit of this function as x approaches a is equal to l? Well, we need to look back at our definition. And this tells us that for each positive epsilon, there should be a positive number delta, such that for values of x within delta of a, but not equal to a itself, the distance between the value of the function f of x and the number l is less than epsilon. So let's look at the interval of real values that lie within a distance epsilon of the number l. So on this picture, that's just these values on this axis here, okay? And we can extend this out to give a strip of width to epsilon centred around this number l. Note that the function sometimes goes outside this strip, like over here, and sometimes it lies within this strip, like over here. Now for the function to have a limit at a, there needs to be some positive number delta such that for x values within a distance delta of a, but not equal to a itself, the function values f of x all need to lie within this strip, okay? So in this example we can take delta to be this distance here which I've drawn because for all x values within delta either side of a but not equal to a, the function takes values lying within a distance epsilon of the number l. Now this diagram just shows one particular choice of epsilon but the definition says that this should work for any choice of epsilon, however small. So if we'd chosen a smaller epsilon, that would mean we draw a narrower strip, say that something like this. We may have had to pick delta to be smaller, right? Because some of the function values which uh, in the previous example uh, lay within the strip might no longer lie within this narrower strip. Uh, we might need to be stricter and take delta to be something like this. The important point about limits is that however tiny we choose epsilon, or however narrow a strip we draw, if we take delta to be small enough, then at all x lying within delta either side of a, 
but not equal to a, the function takes values which lie within this narrow strip, or in other words, they lie within a distance epsilon of the limit l. So let's look at an example. Suppose we're asked to think about the function f of x is 5x squared plus 5x minus 10 over x minus 1, and we're asked to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 1, proving our result from first principles, that is, from the definition of limits that we've just given. Note that in this example, we can't even talk about the value of f of x at x equals 1, since if we plug in x equals 1, we get 0 on the denominator. In fact, you can check you'll get 0 on the numerator as well. So we'll end up talk about, talking about evaluating 0 over 0, which is, of course, undefined. So in this case, we can only talk about evaluating f of x at x which are close to 1, but not actually at 1. All we can say about x equals 1 is whether f has a limit as x approaches 1. Now, it's always a good idea to play around uh, with the function to get some initial idea of how it behaves. For example, um, we could pick some function values very close to 1 um, and make a table of those function values, as I've done here. Or alternatively, we could plot some points and have an attempt at drawing a graph. And as you can see, both of these approaches seem to indicate that uh, the limit is 15, okay? So these sorts of approaches, you know, lead us to suspect that the limit is 15. But it's important to note that neither of these approaches, drawing a graph, looking at particular function values, constitute a proof that the limit's 15, um, even if they're quite convincing, right? Because we haven't made any reference yet to the definition of limit. So let's try to prove from first principles in other words, from the definition of limit, that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is equal to 15. Now, for our proof, we're going to need to check the definition of limit. So we need to show that given any positive epsilon, we can find a positive delta. So let epsilon greater than 0 be given. Then remember, our aim is to find a positive delta, we want to find some positive delta such that um, for all x within a distance delta of 1, we're not equal to 1, the distance between f of x and 15 is less than epsilon. Well, what is the distance between f of x and 15? For each x, the distance between f of x and 15, well, remember our definition of f of x given up here, this is just going to be 5x squared plus 5x minus 10 over x minus 1 minus 15. And performing some algebra and collecting everything over a common denominator of x minus 1, and then also pulling out a factor of 5 from the front, you get 5 lots of the modulus of x squared minus 2x plus 1 all over x minus 1. You should check this step. Which factorizes to x minus 1 squared over x minus 1, which simplifies even further to 5 lots of the distance between x and 1. And remember, our aim is to make this less than epsilon, right? But it's clear that we can make this smaller than epsilon. For example, we can just choose x to be close enough to 1 that this quantity, the modulus of x minus 1, is smaller than epsilon over 5, right? Because then this total quantity will be smaller than epsilon. So it's now clearer what delta we want to pick. So let's say pick delta to be epsilon over 5. Then if x is within delta of 1, not equal to x itself. Well, if delta is epsilon over 5 by our choice, we then have that the distance between f of x and 15, which remember we've just shown is equal to 5 lots of the distance between x minus 1. Well, by our assumption, this is going to be less than 5 lots of delta, which is just epsilon over 5. Okay? The 5s cancel, so altogether, this distance is less than epsilon. So to summarize, we were given some positive epsilon up here, 
We've managed to find a positive delta, just take delta to be epsilon over 5, such that whenever x is within a distance delta of 1, f of x is forced to be within a distance epsilon of 15. So we're done.